All right, advanced math eight, we've got lesson 8.1.5, exponential graphs, two equations. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the information that we have seen here on these graphs, and we're going to try to turn them into equations. So remember, when we're looking at uh, these problems, that we're going to probably assume that these are all going to be in the form of y equals a times b to the x. So I want to find my a value and I want to find my b value. Oh, I've really messed up my phone. Anywho, all right, I was getting out my phone because we're going to need it in a little bit as a calculator. So anyways, on our first problem here, I look at my y-intercept. The y-intercept is 5. Because this is the point 0, 5. So my y-intercept is 5, so that's my a value. My a value is 5 there. This point says it goes over 1 and up 2. That would be the point 1, 7. So we have to ask ourselves, what number are we multiplying by to go from 5 to 7? Let's check that out. If I do 7 divided by 5, I get 1.4. So if I take 5 and multiply by 1.4, I would get 7. So my B value is 1.4. So now I can write down my equation. Y equals 5 times 1.4 to the x power. Next one. On this one, I can see down here that my A value is 40. Now, going from 120 down to 40, I am fully expecting that to be a fraction because this is a decreasing function. And remember, when it's a decreasing function, our B values should be less than 1. So 120 to 40, what am I dividing by? It looks like I'm dividing by 3. So to write that as a multiplier, that would be multiplying by one-third. So if I take 120 and divide by 3, I get 40. So that's working out for me there. So that means my B value is one-third. So this one would be Y equals 40 times one-third to the X power. Next one. Right here, I've got my A value, because this is the point 0, 18. So my A value is 18. Over here, I've got 518. Okay, so 518, it's still 18. It hasn't changed. So what am I multiplying each time so that it's not changing? Well, if it's not changing, then my B value has to be 1, because I'm just multiplying by 1 each time. So this one would be y equals 18 times 1 to the x power. It has a b value of 1, and we've talked about before that b values of 1 are horizontal lines, so that makes sense. All right, the next one, a little bit trickier. Okay, so this one starts at 0, 7, and then it goes to 356. Now, if I take 56 and divide by 7, I get, 50, I get 8. 58. I get 8. But that's not my multiplier because I've multiplied three times to get to there. So I've already multiplied it twice before I get there. So we do know that our A value is 7. So I have to multiply by the same number. So if I'm multiplying by 8 to get there, what times what times what equals 8? What I'm asking is, what number to the third power equals 8? Well, let's break down 8. 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So it looks like the number to the third power is 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So my B value, 
would not be 8 because this is the third term. We want to find the first term, which would be multiplying by 2. So I've got a b value of 2. So you get y equals 7 times 2 to the x power. Now let's just double check it to make sure that it works. So if I plug in 3 into x, 2 to the third power is 8, and 8 times 7 is 56. So now I know that I'm right. And I can now also find out what these other points are. If I plug in 1, I get 2 to the first power, which is 2. 2 times 7 is 14. So this would be the point 114. And then if I multiply 14 by 2, because I'm going to multiply by 2 each time, this number would be 228. And if I multiply 28 by 2, I get 56. So we can see that it's working now as I go up the, if I go up the exponential curve. Okay, next one. This is a little bit harder. It's a lot harder. So on this one, what I see here is I definitely have an A value at 10. So this is the point 0, 10. So my A value is 10. Now this one, a little bit harder. I start at 10. And then after the fifth time multiplying, I'm all the way down here at 0 0.0032. This isn't one that we're going to just get off the top of our heads. Probably. Probably. All right, so I need to find the B value of the function. In order to find the B value of the function, I have to find what number I multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. What number did I multiply 10 by 5 times? to get 0, 0, 3, 2. So we need to find the number that was multiplied by itself. Let me make that into two, one word. By itself is two words. Five times and then multiply by ten to get zero zero three two point zero zero three two. All right, if I were to write that as an equation. Here's what my equation would look like. My b value here, or not my b value, my y value here is 0 0.0032. My a value is 10. I don't know what the b value is, but I do know what the x value is. The x is 5. So let's go ahead and solve this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 10. All right, so 0 0.0032 divided by 10. OK, so I divide it by 10, and I get 0 0.00032 equals b to the fifth. Okay, so I want to find out which number multiplied by itself five times would equal 0 0.00032. And some of you probably already have noticed what it is. Some of you haven't, and that's okay. So what we're going to do to find this is we're going to use roots, square roots. Well, not square roots. We're going to use radicals because uh, this is going to be the fifth root. So, you know, when we have like, uh, you know, if we had like b squared equals 16, we would take, how do we undo squaring? We square root. And we'd get b is equal to 4. Well, to undo this one, we're not going to square root, we're going to fifth root it.
And the fifth root is just asking us which number multiplied by itself five different times is 0 0.00032. And here's how you do that on your calculator. Now, if you've got one of these, like your calculators, there's two different main types of calculators on how they calculate. Um, this is the TI-30XS. I just like to say that because it sounds kind of cool. Yeah, I've got a TI-30XS. But anyways, if you look right up above the caret button right there, you see X and then the square root button. So what I'm going to do is, I have to remember how to do this on this one. I think I hit the five first and then second and then there, yeah, that works. So I did second and then that button. And now it's saying fifth root. So now it's telling me what should I put inside there? 0 0.00032. And then I'm going to tell it to calculate for me because I'm lazy. Ah, it's 0.2. So this tells me that my B value is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 would give us 0 0.00032. So that's how to do it on this calculator. Again, if you want to see it one more time, we would do five because it's going to be the fifth root. Hit the second button. Hit this little caret button. Now it's saying the fifth root. And then I just plug in 0.00032. There you go. Now, if you're using another calculator that does not do that same operation the same way, your phones are a example of this. I have to remember how to do it on the phone. I always use the other calculator. So on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to do it a little bit backwards. We're going to do 0 0.00032. And then here's a little button right here. It says Y root of X right there. Can you see it? Right there. You can't even see it. It's all blurry. But anyway, it's right here. It says y root of x right there. So x is the first thing I need to type in. So I'm going to type 0 0.00032. That's the x. That's what's going to go inside the radical. Okay, then I'm going to hit the y, this button right there. And now I'm going to tell it which root I want. So I want the fifth root. Fifth root, and then enter. And it gives me answer 0.2. So one more time for that one. What we do is do 0 0.00032, hit the Y, the root Y of X button right here, right up above tangent. You can see it's highlighted right now because it's waiting for me to input something else. It wants to know which root do I want. So that's the Y button up, that's the Y up here. So the root that I want is the fifth root, and it tells me the answer is 0.2. Okay, so that's how to do those two different calculations. So I get 0.2. So now I'm able to write the equation because now I know my B value is 0.2 and I know my A value is 10. So the equation for that exponential function would be Y equals 10 times 0 0.2 to the X power. All right, next one. Write the, ex, write the equation of the exponential function with an asymptote of y equals 0. Okay, so it's going to be like all the other ones we've been doing. Um, and it's going to pass through the points 0, 5, and 4, 1,280. Okay, so this one right here, that's my a value because 0, 5 is the y-intercept. There's a couple ways that you can do this. One of the ways that we can do this is just ask ourselves how many, what did we multiply by to go from 5 to 1280? So if I just do um, 1280 divided by 5, I get 256. You might see the answer now that you know that's 256 if you know your uh, multiples. So I multiplied and got 256, but this is the fourth term. So that means I multiplied some number four different times to get to 256. And if you're really good with your multiples, you know that that's four. But anyways, so here's what I'm going to do. I don't know what B is. So I've got Y equals 5 times B to the X. So I'm going to use this one to plug in numbers here. The Y is 1280. 
A's five. B, we don't know, we're looking for it. And the X is four. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is divide by five on both sides. And I'm gonna get B to the fourth equals 256. Okay, so I want to know what number multiplied by itself is four different times is 256. So I can get it just by trying out different numbers, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the fourth root because the fourth root undoes, undoes, that doesn't sound good. Uh, let me, no, I don't know. Anyways, it undoes the fourth power. So over here, I would just get B. All right, let's take out our calculators. I want to do the fourth root of 256. So again, remember on this one, you do the root first. So we're going to do fourth root. Wow, this is really bad. Fourth root of 256. Enter. Four is the answer, just like I predicted. So smart. Okay, if I was doing this calculator. Okay, so this one. Instead of plugging in the root first, we plug in the radical first. So I'm going to do 256. I hit the y root of x, and then I want the fourth root. So I do fourth root and then equals, and the answer is 4. So I get an answer of 4 either way I do it. So b is equal to 4, and now we can write our equation. Our a value is 5, our b value is 4, so this would be y equals 5 times 4 to the x power. And we can double check to make this make sure this one works. You can plug in a 4 here, then you can do 4 to the 4th and get 256, and then multiply by 5, and you get 1280. That's all I got for you. Math hard. See you later.